Hey guys, welcome, welcome. Welcome everyone. Hey, drop a drop your location in the chat. Where are you guys watching from? See, we got some people from Canada. See some friends from North America in here. Hey Dan. So we have a, a whole lineup. Um we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen friends that are going to be jumping on um, in five minute increments starting at 845 through 945. So we'll see how this works as far as getting people on and getting getting them to wrap it up in five minutes. But uh, first up, we'll have Brian Barcelona. He's going to join us in about two minutes. Let me make sure he's ready to go. And we're just going to pray for the next hour. We're going to pray and we're going to believe. From the Ukraine, praying for you. Hey Gabe, love you bro. Is who here's from the Ukraine? Um or presently in the Ukraine? Hey Matt, love you man. Born in the Ukraine, live in Kentucky. Well, I just believe this is going to be a, a faith-filled hour. I'll post this back uh, afterwards. And uh, just share this with a friend. If you're watching right now, double tap the screen or, or hit the hearts. That'll help push it to more pages so we can just get as many people possible um, praying. So Brian should be hopping on right now. I'll see. Missouri. Thanks for being here, guys. All right, Brian is on. I think we're adding him now. Hey, man. Hey, man. Dude, thanks so much for being on, bro. Love you. Bro, love you too, man, of course. Well, bro, you got... Four and a half minutes, just anything on your heart for the Ukraine, and obviously we'll pray, but just love yeah. to hear you weigh in and encourage yeah. everyone. You know, I've been on this verse probably like many have, uh, but in Matthew 24, it, it, it speaks of um, the wars, the rumors of wars, kingdom rising up against kingdom, and I feel like uh, when we're reading that, we know obviously that that's not the end that's the beginning of the end that's to come and i just i want to just pray as we're on this this live right now together that we would witness a great awakening in the churches in ukraine the churches in russia uh if you've ever read matthew 24 after jesus speaks of all these wild things that are terrible it says here in verse verse 14 and this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached and I just want to pray that the churches would be strengthened in those regions right now. So if you guys are on this, this time with us, would you just do me a favor? Would you just pray with us? If you will commit to pray right now, um, just 
just throw it in the comment section, something you're going to pray for, for these other nations. We're not praying for ourselves right now. We're going to pray for Ukraine, for Russia, for all that's happening in those places. So Lord, right. we pray in the name of Jesus that your presence would come. Father, we pray right now that the church would rise up in this hour. Lord, we pray yes. that there would be great signs and wonders in those streets, God. I pray that, that those who are dead would be raised, that the sick would be healed, that the good news of Jesus would be preached, Lord. Father, we pray for the leaders of these nations, that they would encounter God. Father, we pray that Vladimir Putin would encounter God. Yes, Lord. The Holy Spirit would apprehend his heart in Jesus' name name father we pray for all those that are being persecuted over there in jesus name i pray for your presence god just to come lord i even just pray for pastors god that they would be they would be just set on fire god with no fear father we break fear off of ukraine lord in jesus yes. Name. Jesus, and Father, we ask you right now that here in America, we would not be selfish and just look at our own issues, that we would turn our eye and our heart in this hour, God, to those who are in those nations. Father, we pray that you would confuse the plan of the enemy, Lord. We pray, God, that you would give strategic plans, God, to the nations that are helping, God, these innocent people. And Lord, we pray right now, even for a burden. Listen, if you're on this live and you, you don't have a burden for Ukraine or for Russia, or you haven't been able to connect your heart, I want to pray that you would get a burden right now, that you couldn't just, just go on with your normal day. I love what yeah. Shane's doing. Shane's been gripped by the heart of God, and this is why he's doing this live. It's because he's gripped for something greater than just himself. So if you're on here and you want a heart for Ukraine, you want a heart for Russia, you want to pray for those people, where you're at right now, ask the Lord to give you a heart. And I'm going to pray for you, Lord. We pray right now that you would Thank give you, us a heart, Lord for these nations, God, that you would let us, God, not be selfish in this hour. Break our hearts for what breaks yours, Lord. Break our heart, God, for these places. And Father, we pray that even tonight, as we lay our head, God, and we go to sleep in peace, in this nation, that we would remember those, God, who are not going to sleep in peace. We'd remember those, God, who do not have the ability to sleep next to their families. Lord, we pray in Jesus' name that your presence would just come right now over this live, over this phone, that it Thank would fill Lord. every room in Jesus' name of those that are watching, God. Give us a burden right now, Father, for those nations in Jesus' name. Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen, man. Yeah, dude, the, the thing that gets me with Matthew 24 is uh, right before he says that the gospel will be preached, as he said, but he who endures to the end shall be saved. And I think just going along with what you've said to encourage everyone here that it might look bad for a time, but, but, but Christ lives on forever. And those who are in him will live on forever. And so we endure to the end by never taking our eyes off of Jesus, no matter what is happening in the world. And that is how we overcome. We endure to the end. So, Brian, love you, man. Thanks for hopping on. Yeah, I love you, man. And, you guys uh, take care. We'll see you soon. We'll talk to you soon. All right. Peace. See you. Awesome. Man, I love Brian. Okay. Josue should be next. My friend Josue. Amazing guy. We'll see if he is on and ready to roll. Were you guys encouraged by that? Were you guys encouraged by Brian's prayer? Matthew 24 is so key. Jesus talks about all of this stuff, but he tells us, he, he tells us that the love of many is going to grow cold. And I don't know about you, but I want to make sure that I stay tender. Hey, Josue, send me a request, bro. I'll add you in here. Here we go. The love's going to grow cold, but those of us who stay near to the Lord, our hearts will remain tender, and we won't be those people that grow cold. We will walk with the Lord always. Josue. My brother. Hey, man. How are you? How you doing, man? I'm feeling that heat, bro, that fire. <laughs> bro, that's good because it's cold here in Texas, actually. <laughs> I, was, I was hearing Brian's prayer, man. What a prayer. Amen, dude. Yeah, well, bro, you got the next four minutes, four and a half minutes, whatever's on your heart. Yeah, let's, let's hear it, man. Let's do it. Let's do it. Uh, you want us to just start praying? 
you can pray, you can give a word, your thoughts on what's happening, and then pray. It's whatever you feel led to do. Yeah, I just, I just think that um, we're, we're supposed to do exactly what we're doing tonight. You know, we're, we're supposed to bridge the gap between heaven and earth. And I think that this is amazing what you're doing. You know, it's, it's really positioning the body of Christ to take the role of an intercessor. You know, Amen. and the Bible says that God the Father looks for two types of people. In the New Testament, he looks for worshipers. And in the Old Testament, he looks for intercessors. And an mm. intercessor is literally somebody that can stand in the gap, either for a person, a family, a city, or in this case, a nation. And so I believe that there's power in agreement. I believe that when two or more are gathered in his name, whatever is asked, we will see it manifest. Amen. And so, you know, Jesus taught us best. You know, and, and his disciples asked him one thing. Teach us how to do one thing. And that was to get a hold of God the Father in heaven and to pray. Mm. And so tonight I'm humbled. I'm honored. I'm hyped to be a part of this prayer. There's so many people that are gathered watching. They're going to catch it on the archive. Listen, this is the moment to just put your heart into a prayer. And not just for the body of Christ in Ukraine and in Russia, but for the nation itself yeah. and not just for the nation and the politics but for the body of christ and so tonight man let's just let's just get into it yeah yeah let's do it shane father in the name of jesus father we continue to bridge the gap god between heaven and earth father we say let your kingdom come to yes. the ukraine let your kingdom come to russia even china god we pray for you, countries like ukraine and and taiwan that are are, are, are wanting to be taken over, God. We pray for the justice. We pray for liberty. We pray for freedom. And Father, right now, we just pray, God, that your kingdom would infiltrate, God, both that nation, God. We, we pray for the nation of Ukraine. Father, we declare divine protection over that nation. We declare divine protection over cities right now. I feel it. God, we just command angels right now. Angelic activity in those cities, God. Father, we declare in Jesus' name, just as we've heard it in testimonies. You know, what was coming to my spirit right now is uh, testimonies of people. You know, when 9-11 when happened here in the, in the, in the, in the U.S., there was people that, that testified years later. I was supposed to go into work, but something told me not to go that day or, or wow. I left home early or I got a phone call or something happened. I was supposed to be there, but I wasn't there right now. God, do it again. We just Thank release you, those testimonies right now, God. We're families. We're families that were supposed to go to, to perhaps a, a bomb site or were supposed to go to a place where, where perhaps they, they could get injured or hurt or, or even die. God, we declare in the mighty name of Jesus that there are angels that are released right now, God. They're yes. being released to the body of Christ. They're being released to the families of Ukraine. They're being released to young people. They're being released to elderly. Holy Spirit, right now, Thank can a Lord. nation be changed in one day? Yes, it can. Father, we declare in the mighty name of Jesus that there is supernatural activity that begins to invade that earth. It begins to invade those cities. It begins to invade that nation. God, we stand in the gap, and today, God, we begin to proclaim the power of the kingdom. We Thank proclaim, you, God, your power. We proclaim, God, your glory and your kingdom to invade that earth, to invade the Ukraine, God. Right now, Father, we stand in the gap and we plead the blood of Jesus, God, wherever there's helicopters flying, wherever there's troops wherever there is missiles wherever there's bombs god we just begin to plead the blood of jesus if you're watching right there just begin to plead the blood we declare jesus is lord over ukraine lord, we declare that jesus is lord over russia father we declare the transformation <laughs> of the heart of president putin we declare that god even if it, even if it's in his dreams that you will supernaturally go after him, God. We That's declare right. supernatural encounters uh, in his dreams where he can't escape, God. Uh, yeah, 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 that you'd speak to him, that you'd show up, that you will reveal yourself. We pray 
for Thank his you, salvation. God. We pray that you would reveal yourself unto him, just like it's written in your word, that when you resurrected, the Bible says you appear to Mary, you appear to people, you appear to your, the apostles, you appear to your disciples, That's appear right. to that president, appear to those soldiers, appear. Father, we declare mercy. We declare mercy, God, mercy. Father, we believe, God, that there's people that they won't do things out of mercy, that they won't make the wrong decisions out of mercy, either in yeah. politics. We declare that soldiers won't make the wrong decisions out of mercy. Father, tonight we just ask, God, that your realm, your realm will take a hold of that earth, God. Your government will take a hold of that earth, God. Your heart will begin to take a hold of that earth. You know what I feel, Shane? I feel the mercy of God inhabiting that nation. I see the mercy mm. of God inhabiting that war. People not 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 knowing what 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 why they're feeling mercy. All of a sudden they're gonna feel mercy. All of a sudden they they're not gonna <laughs> they're not gonna go through with, with with certain orders. God, let your world permeate that earth. God, let your world permeate your invisible kingdom. Let your invisible government let your invisible world begin to 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 just inundate god to just inundate that war to yeah. to infiltrate into that world we release angels your word says that there are angels people that that we wouldn't even know that they're angels and there's angels god let manifestations of your angels just guide your people guide people in general into safety father we just begin to proclaim and declare divine preservation over the nation of ukraine divine protection over that nation divine immunity divine health divine provision god we pray for the families we pray for the men the women the elderly we pray for the young people and father we prophesy that all things work together all things work together for those yeah yeah that love you and are called according to your purpose father we ask that revival would manifest in the ukraine God. Thank we you, ask Lord. that revival would begin to to arise even in the underground churches in russia father we ask in the name of jesus that you would touch that nation of russia god that you would that you would awaken the church god every shakening with every shakening comes revival and we pray god for the greatest revival that ukraine that russia has ever seen that you would appear to people in government government and politics that you would appear to people in media god this is the moment this is the moment spirit of god hover just as you did over the waters hover over the ukraine hover over russia god can nations be changed in one day god we we ask for a divine union we ask we ask for what seems impossible we ask for the impossible god in yes. the name of Jesus. Jesus' Father, name. Thank you, God. Amen. Bro, you got me fired up over here. You're only the second person. <laughs> Bro, on. I don't want to stop, man. I feel like there's such a heart that's being birthed I in know. this Instagram. Well, bro, lead a, lead a little revival right there, people, to pray, and we're going to keep trucking on. And Yeah, let's so do it. So that you hopped on, man. I love you, man. Love you, bro. We'll talk to you soon. Bless you, brother. Thank you. Man, love Josue so much. All right, we've got Aaron Costello next. Aaron, can you send me a request, bro? Here we go. <clears throat> Josue is so fiery, man. That was awesome. Hey, man. Hey, what's up, Shane? Dude, thanks for being on here. Love you, dude. Oh, dude, absolutely. Thanks for doing this and calling us all to pray, man. This is yeah. what, we need, what we need to be doing. My heart's just heavy, you know, seeing all the footage that everyone else is seeing. And and so, man, I, you got the next four minutes of whatever's on your heart. Just yeah. it's all yours, man. Well, yeah, man, I just I feel like this this is what we need to be doing. Inter intercession shifts history and um there's two things that I, I just have been feeling on my heart number one is that the church would respond in faith and prayer 
And then secondly, I just feel like God wants to to awaken the church with radical boldness in Russia, mm-hmm. in Ukraine, all across Eastern Europe, Asia. Um, I, I texted you this earlier today, but hours of crisis become doors of revival, um, especially yeah. when they're hinged in prayer and fasting and boldness. And um, yeah. I want to I want to read this is Acts, Acts chapter four. Um, you know, Peter, Peter says this. Um, so when they heard, they raised their voice to God. This is Acts 4, 24. They raised their voice, voice to God with one accord and said, Lord, you are God who made heaven and earth and sea and all that is in them, who by the mouth of your servant, David said, why did the nations rage and the people plot vain things? The kings of the earth took their stand and the rulers were gathered together against the Lord and against his anointed. And then it goes down in this and it says, now, Lord, look on their threats and grant to your servants that with all boldness, they may speak your word by stretching Mm -hmm. out your hand to heal and that signs and wonders may be done through the name of your holy servant, Jesus. And when they had prayed, the place where they were assembled together was shaken and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and they spoke the word of God with boldness. I want to just pray for those that are gathered in Ukraine and Russia that are praying right now, that are huddled in homes, in living yeah. rooms, in, in church buildings. And they're praying right now for breakthrough, for boldness, for an outpouring of the Holy Spirit. I want to pray that the Holy Spirit would crash in on those Amen. believers. And so Jesus, we just lift our voice and, hey, all you guys that are watching, don't just listen to me pray, but jump in and pray too. God, we yeah. pray for the church in Ukraine. We pray for the church in Russia, God, in Belarus. God, we pray for the underground church in China. God, we pray for the church in Taiwan. We pray for the church across Europe in Asia. God, we ask for an outpouring of the Holy Spirit. God, you see the ones that are huddled together in groups right now or in families and and choosing to not give in to fear, but to pray and believe for an outpouring of the Spirit and for breakthrough. God, I pray right now that you would pour out your Spirit on these ones that are gathered, that you would fill them with boldness in this hour. I uh, Man, even this week, I was talking to one of the circuit riders there was a shooting outside of a coffee shop. They all ran into the kitchen of the coffee shop, huddled, waiting for the shooting to end. And he just began preaching the gospel to everybody that was hiding, wow. you know, saying like, if this is your last moment, you've got to receive the Lord. I just pray, God, for fiery evangelists yes. and bold, bold believers to preach your word, even in this hour of crisis. God, I pray that many would be saved. And I pray, God, as the body of Christ around the world watches what's going on. God, I pray that you would give us faith to pray, but that also, God, you would just rip off the cover of dead religion and Thank that you. you would you would touch our hearts with your heart and that you would cause us to walk in boldness because the hour is late. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. In Jesus' name, amen, bro. Thank you so much, man. Yeah, man. Love, Love you, dude. dude. Yeah, we'll talk to you soon. All right, we'll see you. All right. Man, Aaron is so awesome, so fiery. And we're having another fiery evangelist on next. His name is Jeff Mathis. He's one of my good friends. And he should be on here any minute. And so we're excited to have Jeff on next. Are you guys encouraged by this? Let us know in the comments as I add Jeff here um, how you guys are doing. And again, if there's anyone from Ukraine or in the Ukraine right now, let us know in the comments. We are praying for you and your nation. Hey, Jeff. Hey, bro. How's it going? Dude, it's going well. Thanks so much for being on, man. Yes, of course, man. It's an hour. Bro, you got a little over four minutes to just share your heart, whatever's on your heart, and to pray and just encourage everyone watching and that will watch. So it's all yours. Yeah, well, a few things is I've been talking with uh, one of my friends who's uh, he's in Ukraine right now. And uh, he's just been sending me updates throughout the day. He sent me such a, a text that struck my heart. And he said, Jeff, you just need to pray. We're, we're heard that in two hours that there's bombs are coming. And uh, it just struck my heart of like, gosh, it is an hour to pray. And I was thinking out of Matthew 9. I was going to read this. Then we're just going to jump into prayer. But 
in Matthew 9, it says, Jesus went through all the towns, villages, teaching their synagogues, proclaiming the good news of the kingdom, healing every disease and sickness. And it says this, when he saw the crowds, he had compassion on them because they were harassed and helpless like sheep without a shepherd. And then mm. he said to his disciples, the harvest is plentiful and the workers are few. Ask the Lord of the harvest, therefore, to send out laborers into the harvest field. And I just thought it's such a time to get discouraged. So easy as we could look at the crisis in Ukraine, look at Russia, look at what's happening and, and to be struck with discouragement, but that's not in the heart of Jesus. The yeah. heart of Jesus is looking at Ukraine right now and he's saying the harvest is ripe. And I grew up in Tacoma, we had a heavy Slavic community and I remember there was a coffee shop that I would go to and you could not go to this coffee shop in Tacoma, Washington without a Slavic friend coming up and sharing the gospel to you. And I just know that it's in the heart of the Slavic people. They are evangelists. It's their inheritance, power of God breaking out everywhere they go. Come I on. just felt in these next few minutes, could we just pray for Slavic evangelists to rise up even now in country here in America? God, would you raise up Slavic evangelists? So let's yes. just pray this, Lord. We just believe right now that it is an hour to rise up. It is not an hour to shy away or coward in fear. Lord, I pray a spirit of boldness, Lord, in the midst of persecution. The disciples, they prayed, Holy Spirit, come. And they were filled with the Holy Spirit in the midst of persecution. And they continued preaching the gospel with boldness. Father, we ask for a spirit of boldness to come on the church. And Lord, would you raise up fiery-eyed evangelists, God, that would crisscross all across Ukraine, all across the Slavic speaking world, Lord, we ask in Jesus' name, Thank raise you. up missionaries, raise up your workers in this hour. We refuse to coward in fear. We refuse to take on the report that the news might want us to believe. And we take on the report of Jesus. That's the harvest is ripe. The yes. harvest is ripe. We declare over Ukraine and Russia today that the harvest is ripe in Jesus' name. That it is an hour of salvation. It is an hour of healing. It is an hour of deliverance, God. We know the times that we're living in. And Jesus, we say, raise up your bride. Baptize them in fire. Baptize you, them God. in boldness, God. I pray over shame, over myself, God. We're willing. Here we are, God. Send us. Lord, whatever our call, someone watching this, being burdened for Ukraine, being burdened for missions, God. I pray you baptize them in yes. the Holy Spirit and fire. God, that everywhere they go, God, they would be possessed. Maybe it's not Ukraine, but it's in their hometown. It's where they're at right now. That in an mm. hour of persecution, in an hour of war, you would raise up evangelists. You would yes. raise up fiery prophets with the word of the Lord like Jeremiah shut up in their bones that they could not contain it. Holy Spirit, we ask, would you baptize us in yes. boldness? And we pray, Ekbalo laborers, God. Send laborers, God. Come Send on. laborers, God, to, to Ukraine, God, to Russia, in Jesus' name. Amen. In Jesus' name. Come on, bro. bro. Amen. And you know what's amazing? Right after he said the harbors, or the, the harvest uh, is plentiful, but the laborers are few, then he equipped the disciples to go out. He gave them power over all unclean spirits, to do all of the miracles and he sent them out and so if you guys have a heart to go out jeff leads a discipleship training school with his wife at ywam in kona yes. that is for people who want to reach the nations and so if you want more info on that you can hit up jeff check out ywam uh, on their website and you can actually put your money where your mouth is and yes. go to these nations and serve on the ground that's what jeff and his family does so man we're so thankful for you Come Thanks on. for being on here, man. Love you so much. I love you, bro. We'll talk soon. We'll talk to you soon. All right. See ya. Bye. Man, I love Jeff. We we did some life together in Tacoma. Um, now we've got Joel Baumberger on. Joel is amazing. He's another missionary. Uh, he's out of Pennsylvania right now. He's with, um, he is, yeah, I'm, I'm like getting all over the place. Rachel just put the uh, Instagram for YWAM Kona, if you're interested, at YWAM Kona right there. So check that out. And Joel, if you're on here, send me a request, dude. And we'll add you. Man, I'm so fired up. 
all these guys get me want to turn this thing off and just start praying. So good. So good, so good. All right. If Joel is not here, then we'll swap to my friend Dan. Dan, are you still on, Dan Adams? Send me a request. We'll bump Joel. Oh, he's trying. Okay. Let me see if I can uh, go live. Here you go. I tried to send you a request there. Let's see if this worked. Here we are. I'm on and ready, bro. Hey, man. Technology is, is hard. I don't know why they make IG Live so hard. <laughs> Woohoo! Well, bro, you got the next four minutes, so whatever's on your heart, man, you got it. Let's go, dude. I'm so glad you're doing this. This is the first scripture that came to my mind as I was just thinking about this. And I know that we're doing a lot of prayer, but um, what I really wanted to do is actually pray for everybody here on this live. Um, John 14, 27, Jesus says this. He says, peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. Not as the world gives do I give to you. And then he says, do not let your heart be troubled, nor let it be fearful. Mm. And this is in Jesus' discourse as he talks about the Holy Spirit coming and actually giving you comfort. And I just felt in this moment, you know, I believe we need to pray for Ukraine. We need to pray for Russia. We need to pray for what is going on. But that actually for a lot of you right now, your heart is very troubled. And your heart is actually very fearful. And there is a lot right now coming against believers, non-believers, where there is confusion, there is fear, there is talk about World War III, there, it is all over. And I feel like what Jesus is saying right now is actually my peace I leave with you. And do not let your heart be troubled. Do not let it be fearful. Yeah. And listen, we've been, we've been promised, you know, Jesus has prophesied this for 2,000 years, that there would be wars and rumors of wars. And please don't hear me. I'm not negating. We need to pray for all of this. Because read Reese Howell. Our prayers are powerful, that yeah. they actually make a difference in <clears throat> this. But right now, I want to turn my attention to everybody even on this live stream and everybody who is a believer in this nation, that, that they would not be fearful or troubled, but they would actually have the comfort of the Holy Spirit in this very difficult time. Yeah, so, that's good. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, I just pray right now, Lord, that any area where there would be a demonic spirit of fear, I break that power in the name of Jesus. And Lord, I ask right now for your spirit of peace, your spirit of love, your spirit of comfort to come and even invade rooms of every person watching this right now. But Lord, yeah. I ask for people who are beyond this live stream. I pray for the church across America, Lord, that they would not bow to the spirit of fear. They would not bow to the spirit of anxiety and stress as they look on to the political climate, as they look on to the war that is raging on. But I pray, Lord, that your spirit Spirit would yes. come in power oh, and that Lord. you would bring comfort to your people. Lord, I'm praying that you would bring peace to your people, a supernatural peace that goes beyond what the world brings, God. Yes. Lord, it goes so beyond what the world offers, but it comes deep from within. So, Lord, I ask that you would guard our hearts, that you would guard our minds with your peace Thank you, right now, Lord. Because God, we need it more than ever as we are frustrated, as we're concerned, and even those who are in Ukraine, those who are in other nations, Lord, that they're experiencing real calamity, that they're experiencing real fear. And I ask, Lord, that right now, that your peace, which surpasses all comprehension would yeah. guard our hearts and our minds in Christ Jesus. And Lord, mm -hmm. that only comes through the power of your Holy Spirit. Thank you. Lord. So Lord, I'm asking for a great move of your spirit.
that would come and would fill our hearts. Lord, that we would not be caught up with what CNN or with what Fox or BBC says, but we would be caught up with what you are saying, God. Thank you, Lord. That we would hear what you are saying, God. And that we would invite your presence into our homes and into our hearts. And Lord, I'm asking that, Lord, if there is a burden of intercession, which is so real, that you would burden your saints with intercession. But Lord, if there is a burden of fear and anxiety that is actually from the enemy and is masking itself as religiosity or spirituality, Lord, that that would be silenced yeah. and that we wouldn't, we wouldn't fall under this false pretense of anxiety and stress when maybe you, Lord, are actually in a place of peace and comfort of your Holy Spirit. So God, I'm just asking for the church right now and for every person on this live stream that, that we would experience a true measure of eternal peace that only you can supply. And from that place of peace, that we would be able to walk out in radical obedience. We would be able to walk out in radical love and that we would actually be able to intercede from a place of authority, from a place of peace, and from a place of rest in your a presence, God, rather than a place of striving and fear. Yeah. So, Lord, I thank you for what you are doing. And I thank you for your Holy Spirit that brings comfort in every area of our lives. And I pray especially for those who are in Ukraine right now, that your Holy Spirit would bring comfort to them, that only you can do, God, and you would bring peace to them in the name of Jesus. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Amen. Bro, thanks so much for being on, man. Love you, dude. I Absolutely. Thank you for doing this. And yeah. bless all of you guys. Um, we are in it, guys. God is doing some incredible things. That's and right. now more than ever, it is time for his glory to be manifest in this earth. That's right. Amen. Well, thanks, Love man. You, we'll talk to you soon. Love you. Yep. All right. Love Joel. He's so awesome. Okay. We've got a few people left. We're a little bit behind schedule, but it's okay. I think people are pretty flexible. Here we go. Let me see here. Try to add the next. Hey, man. What's up, bro? How are you doing? I'm good, man. Love what you're doing. Love Thanks, this man. Love this prayer together. Thanks for being on here. Yes, we're running Dude. a little short on time, right? So we probably need to jump right in. Oh, you're good. Yeah, we're we're just we bumped everything five minutes. So you got five minutes. Whatever's on your heart, just go for awesome. it. Awesome, awesome. Yeah. Well, I'm gonna jump right in. I wanna, um, I wanna read a verse out of Revelation. Um, this week, actually, at the upper room, we were praying for. We weren't. We weren't. We didn't go into a prayer set to pray for Ukraine and Russia, but out of this verse, we got into this verse, and out of this verse, we started praying for just Ukraine and Russia and, and, and what's going on. And I want to read this verse. It's what's happening before the throne of God. And, um, I mean, a lot of times I just feel like in prayers for these, I can pray things based on what my mind tells me or my opinion, things like this. But in Revelation 7, in verse 9, it's what's before the throne of God. It says, After these things I looked, and behold, there was a great multitude um, and I saw a number that no man could number from every nation, from every tribe, from every people, from every tongue. And they were all standing before the throne and before the lamb. They were clothed with white robes and palm branches in their hands. And they were crying with a loud voice saying, so every tribe, every tongue means there's Ukrainians, there's Russians, there's Africans, there's Americans, mm. there's every tribe and every tongue. And this is the phrase they're saying. They're saying salvation belongs to the Lord. Amen. And uh, I want to pray. I want to pray for what's happening based out of that verse. I just think it's a way that we can we can kind of pull out of ourselves and we can have an e eternal perspective that before the throne of God, what the Lord is surrounding himself is with every tribe and tongue saying the same phrase and it's salvation belongs to the Lord. That's right. Um, so that was just burning on my heart. So, Lord, I just Lord, I thank you that you're not moved 
by war. Lord, I thank yeah. you that you're not unsettled within yourself when war comes and when conflict comes. Um, but Jesus, I thank you that justice belongs to you. I thank you that your mercy is new every day. And Lord, we just declare over Ukraine, we declare over Russia, the phrase that is surrounding you in your throne room, Lord, that salvation belongs to you. Just yes. declare in Ukraine, salvation belongs to you. In Russia, salvation belongs to you. Thank Lord, you. I do declare and ask you to send the laborers. Lord, would you send the harvest? Would you raise people up? Would you raise up leaders? Would you raise up people to go? Lord, but but raise people up that have an eternal prayer deep within them, that salvation belongs to the Lord. It belongs to you, Jesus. Lord, that you would raise up a people who cry mercy on behalf of Ukraine, that cry mercy on behalf of of uh, Russia, Lord, we just declare that your mercy, Lord, would be expressed through those nations, that your mercy would be expressed through the streets of Ukraine. Lord, but I thank you that there is salvation and it belongs to you. So we just ask you to give salvation, God. We ask you to extend salvation. And, and Lord, let there be crazy testimonies of how the gospel begins to thrive in the moment of war, in the day of war. Lord, if a nation was saved, I think of a, I'm thinking of Israel and how is Israel was in the midst of a war that they could not win. They were surrounded on every side. They had Egypt on one side. They had the Red Sea on another. They were outnumbered. And yet here comes God, whose salvation belongs to the Lord, and a nation was liberated in a day. And Lord, if you could do it in Israel, Lord, we just declare that you would do it in Ukraine. Lord, that yes. you would do it in Russia. Lord, on both sides, would you save a nation in a day? Like only you can do, Jesus. Thank and you, so Lord. I just thank you, Lord, that salvation belongs to you. It's something to unify around and to boast in, Lord, the salvation of God. And uh, before we got on this, right when you started, you were on with Brian and um, my wife, she was telling me a story uh, of someone that she follows on on social media who she's from Texas, but she married a Ukrainian and they're getting ready to have their first baby. Mm -hmm. And she left the country today um, to flee, to come back to America, but he couldn't leave. Um, he has to wow. stay to fight and they've already paid in full for the birth. And now she's coming back home to the States to birth this baby. And he's going to have to stay and you know, he's going to miss the birth of his first child. And I think of all the unique stories like that, that are happening on the earth. And Lord, I just declare that, you know, every story, you That's know, right. every son and daughter that is in both countries, Lord, you know, the, the, the way this is hitting intimacy, the way this is hitting family, the Lord, the way this is striking fear and Lord, in each and every one of those situations and mothers and fathers, specifically in this family, Lord, I just declare that salvation belongs to you, Lord, Thank and that you. day of salvation would hit Ukraine, that the yeah. day of salvation would hit Russia, Lord, on both parties where there's conflict, Lord, on both ends. Lord, if, if we sat down with, with the president of both countries, they would both say they're right. They both have something they're looking for. And Lord, I just ask that salvation would hit both sides. Salvation yes. would hit both offices. Salvation would hit both political parties. In Jesus' name, I pray. So Lord, I just I thank you that salvation belongs to you. In Jesus' yeah. name. Amen. Bro, I really love the heart that you carry. You know, everyone who's been on here has such a heart, but I can seriously feel the heart for just people and for yeah. like you were, you know, telling that story and, and it brings it home. It makes it real to people. You know, yeah. this is a far off thing. That's a that's a, a dynamic that we can all, you know, understand. It's it's not some far off video of a person getting bombed, but we can imagine a a woman coming to give birth and her husband has to stay and fight. I mean, yeah, these real people. And uh, I right. just, I, I'm so thankful for you being on here and just, you know, Thank sounding you, the alarm to that need for prayer yes. in that area. So that so girl was a native Texan. She's from San Antonio. So wow, you know, we're in Dallas, just a couple hours south. And yeah, yeah, it's wild, man. But our prayers are doing something, and I'm so thankful that you hopped on. Yeah, and Thank uh, you for having me, man. Yeah, of course, man. We'll we'll talk to you later. Thanks, Aaron. All right, love you guys. All right, love you, bro. Aaron's amazing. He's on staff at Upper Room. Next, my friend uh, Dan Adams is going to be on. He was supposed to be on earlier, but we kept getting bumped. Dan's going to be on. Then my friend Christy, and then her husband Nate, and we've got a couple more people lined up. So we have some more fiery intercessors coming on. So don't. Don't leave just yet. So good. There we go. Here's Dan. Dan's next, and then Christy will get you on here at 930. 
Hey, bro. Hey, what's up, man? Dude, thanks for being on here. You got a 4 a.m. flight, so I, I really appreciate it. Well, it's a little bit later than 4, but I got to wake up at 4. <laughs> oh, I see. Well, yeah. bro, you, you got the next four minutes. Whatever's on your heart, man, just it's all yours. Take us yeah. somewhere. Yeah, man, I'm, I'm honored to be here. I'm honored to uh, be able to come and intercede with all of these awesome men and women of God. Um, my heart has been heavy for what's been going on. I can feel the spirit is grieved, man, because I know God's heart is a father's heart. And it's not that, you know, um, <laughs> that any, any should perish, but all should come right. to know Jesus Christ, come to repentance and know him. So I know that's his heart, but I also know where sin abounds, grace abounds, man. And I know that revival will birth. I know that right. I have a heart and I know in the midst of war in the midst of pandemics, in the midst of mess, uh, God's hand is moving behind the scenes where we can't either. He uses the things that the devil means for bad for his good. So there's something amazing that's about to birth out of this. And I saw a picture today, a video. I'm going to be really fast on my prayer part, but I saw a thing on my video. I mean, on the vi on a video here on Instagram of a child kissing her dad as her dad had to stay back. And the little child was going into the safe zone. And I have, I have three children and I have two daughters. So I was mm. just... I could only imagine what that child was feeling and, and the father having to stay back and fight, fight the country, man, you know, because yeah. they're, they're patriotic at heart. And you know this, you've been in, in war zones and stuff, so you can relate. I can't, but you can. So um, I just want to pray for revival to birth out of this and um, yeah. pray for the families and stuff. So I'll pray right now. Amen. Father, we know your heart, your good, good father, Amen. and you wish that people – would know you, would know Jesus Christ. You are not into the war stuff. You're not into death and destruction. You're not into world leaders being at conflict. That is not what you are, but you do raise up kings and you break down kings. And you can do anything you want. You can move your hand the same way you moved for Israel in, for Israel in the past in their wars, how you did supernatural things. We're believing for supernatural intervention. Yes. In the in Russia and the Ukraine. And I even raise up the presidents, Lord, and I ask you to touch their hearts in such a way that you will penetrate their hearts to know Jesus Christ, to know his character, to know his ways, and they will be a voice of hope and they will be a voice of revival. I know right now in the Ukraine, the Ukrainian people are passionate. They're, they're very unified in their culture and they don't want anything to be broken. So, Father, I pray, as somebody else said, that in the midst of this, fivefold ministers will be raised up. Evangelists will be raised you, up. Lord. Prophets, apostles, pastors, and teachers. Romans 12 gifts. The first Corinthians 12 gifts will start to flourish so that revival can hit that nation and revival can hit Russia. Revival yes. can hit the world because the answer to world's problems is always revival. So, That's Father, right. for revival, we thank you for love going forth, mercy going forth, compassion going forth, the glory yeah. of God going forth. We ask heaven now to come in the midst of this war, in the midst of this turmoil, and turn everything around. I hear the words revival, revival, revival. In the past when there was a pandemic, in the past when there was a war, what followed? Every one of them. Revival. So come revival on. the doorstep. God is doing a new thing. He is doing something special, something that our natural eyes cannot perceive. We cannot get fearful. We cannot let our hearts fail us in the midst of war, in the midst of casualty. We need to stand strong. We need to intercede, and we need to believe. We need to have optimistic hearts, not pessimistic hearts. So, Father, we are calling now for revival across the world. And people, yes. Shane and others, are saying, Lord, even if you want to send us into those areas, even if we have to sacrifice it all for the sake of the gospel, here we are, send us. We didn't sign up for a fluffy thing. We signed up for the real, true gospel. And we do not no longer live. It is you and us that live. So, Father, we thank you for this. We thank you for the Ukrainians. We thank you for the Russians. We thank you for every nation glorifying Jesus Christ. And may there be no death. May there be life and may there be revival in the mighty yes. name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you, man. Amen. Come on. We're going to see revival. And uh, I'm so thankful for you raising up revivalists, not just around the nation, but around the globe. So we're behind you, man. Keep doing what you're doing and uh, have a safe flight tomorrow. Thanks, man. I'm, I'm honored, brother. I love you with all my heart, man. And I look love forward you, bro. to you soon, bro. Yeah, we'll see you soon. See you, bro. All right.
Dan Adams, great guy. All right, next we're going to have my friend Christy Johnston on and then her husband, Nate. Amazing, fiery, prophetic couple, intercessors. They are wild people. So let me see if I can add her. They were just in Australia doing some crazy stuff, interceding. And hey, Christy. Hi, Shane. Thank you so hey, much thank for having you. us. Man, thanks so much for being here. Um, I don't want to take any of your time. You've got four minutes or so of just Absolutely. whatever's on your heart. Take us somewhere. Thank you, Shane. Well, you know, when you asked us to come on and pray today, immediately I went to what I was praying before I went to bed last night and that I was praying for the mothers. Mm. Um, just thinking about the mothers caught up. And I know that there are many men on here as well, but I really wanted to speak to the mothers today yes. um, just really, really quickly and just kind of call an army of women to pray for this. And I believe that the Lord is raising up sons and daughters alike. But there is just something right now about the women. And the Lord reminded me of a picture um, of women standing in their homes. And this is when I was, um, I'm going to tell you really, really quickly, but when I had a newborn, my first newborn, and I remember going, God, I feel like I'm, I'm helpless. I don't have anything to do for the world outside other than raising this child, which I knew was important. But the Lord immediately gave me a picture, Shane, of me holding a sword in one hand and my baby in the other. And wow. he said, quickly go to war with your children. And I feel like that's what the Lord is calling us as mothers right now, to go to war on behalf of the mothers in Ukraine, Come on. on behalf of those mothers that are having to take their children to, to, sorry, to safe zones and just, you know, feeling the effects of war right now and feeling for those children. And so I believe the Lord is calling his women, his sons and daughters alike, but this is specifically to the mothers that you are not yes. helpless right where you are. If you have a newborn at home, if you are raising up children, if you're homeschooling, I want to tell you right now, you are not helpless where you are. You can pray and your words are releasing the sound of heaven. And the Lord gave me these scriptures, Shane, and I'm just going to share them and decree them yes. and let you go. There's Proverbs 31. The mute for the rights of all who are destitute. Open your mouth, judge righteously, defend the rights of the poor and needy. That is a governmental word right there. Do not be silent. And then this one as well, Jeremiah 51 20. You are my war club. You mm. are my war club, my weapon for battle. With you, I shatter nations. With you, I destroy kingdoms. So I wanted to release that right now over the women, over the mothers, that as you're just feeling right now helpless, like, God, I feel like I don't have enough. God is saying to you, you are my war club. Go to war right where you are, and I'm releasing you into this battle to engage the heavenly realms and release angels on my behalf to release protection, to release the answers and solutions of heaven over Ukraine and over Russia, over their people and over the children and families caught up in this needless battle. So I right now release the courage of heaven over you to release these weapons of war in the spirit, Thank that you, you should not remain silent for such a time as this, <laughs> that you are called for this moment, that just as Deborah said, I arose a mother to my nations. He is calling the mothers right now in this hour to arise as mothers for their nations, to arise as mothers on behalf of the mothers. Yes. This, um, this boldness over you and courage in the mighty name of Jesus. This is a clarion call from heaven to the women right now in Jesus' name to stand up and speak on behalf of the destitute to stand up and release your decrees in Jesus' mighty name. You are his war club. And the Lord is releasing you in this hour. This is an hour of intercession. And the Lord is bringing you and inviting you into this. We are all a part of this. And God is calling us into this. And from this moment, we're going to see awakening arise in Come Jesus' on. name. Come love on. Come on. Hey, I'm, I'm down to take another minute or so. Can you quickly just tell us the power of what prayer can do? You guys were just in Australia and saw things shifting, whatever you're, you can share. Can you just tell us, yeah. inspire us about what prayer has done? We've watched, since the moment we go back to Australia, we've watched the Lord completely turn situations from the inside out. We were contacted by someone within government, within high ranks of government, and they contacted us asking us to surround the Prime Minister personally in prayer and intercession. And we've begun watching and we've been able to pray and intercede directly into our Prime Minister um, wow. He's been asking for prophetic words, all of that. And we've literally watched Australia turn from how Canada is at the moment. And almost I feel like we've seen this like interjection of the Lord, interceding and intercepting with the enemy's plans for our nation and turning it back on the right track. And I mean, wow. 
that is just the power. I feel like so many of us are like, who am I? And I've said that so many times. God, who am I to speak into the prime minister? But the Lord is doing that right now. He's looking for those who say, Lord, send me. Even yes. little me sitting at home, you know, just, you know, looking after my children. But the Lord's like, if you're going to, you know, put your hand up, who am I? And I will send you. That is and so I believe good. that's what the Lord is looking for right now is his people who will simply say, Father, I, I don't feel like I have a lot, but I know I have you. And I have more than enough when I have the kingdom of God on my side. And I can release that from wherever I am. I'm not powerless. I'm not without hope. I have Jesus. So, Amen. yeah, I really believe that God can turn this. I really do. Oh, my gosh. I'm not even a mother. And I'm, like, freaking out over here inside. Come on. Well, it's I see so Jessica, good. you know. She's like that. Just this yeah. warrior bride. It's amazing. She I is. Love it. She's watching in the other room. I'm sure she's getting fired up. Well, Come guys, on. this is the power of intercession. She's seen mm. it happen in australia we believe it's going to happen in the ukraine and russia and china and everywhere yes. else in jesus name and um that's just the power of a, a, a prophetic person that is that is being trusted with the the holy spirit you know if you you guys have done so much in secret and god has now used you in the open to literally have the ear of the person who can change everything and so man i'm so thankful to to just run with you guys and and we can't wait to get some time together and i can't yeah. wait to hear from your awesome husband next so i know i'm gonna for being run on and here. he's gonna switch over cool well All man, right. thanks so, so gonna... much for being on here thanks shane love you right. swapping, swapping baby jews with him <laughs> awesome so cool guys wasn't that amazing man I'm here, man. Hey, Nate. <laughs> I, heard, I heard a whole bunch of yelling and praying and anointing going. I was like, yeah, it's all happening. Yeah. Good to see you, man. It's just another day in the life, right? Good to see you, too. Exactly. Man. You, too, man. Well, well bro, whatever's on your heart, just bring it. Yeah. You know, this is something that was in my heart yesterday when I began to hear about everything. And it was this simple phrase was, Ukraine, the Lord has not forgotten you. And I particularly saw people that were in Ukraine right now needing to hear this. So if you're in the Ukraine, maybe you're saying, I'm actually, Nate, I'm, I'm watching from the Ukraine. Please let us know. Yeah. Obviously, if you're not in Ukraine, please be praying with us. But I saw the remnant. I saw the church in the Ukraine. And the Lord says, I've not forgotten you. And I just want to read from Isaiah 49 for a minute. It says, but Zion said, the Lord has forsaken me. The Lord has forgotten me. And he says, can a mother forget the baby at her breast and have no compassion on the child she's born? Though she may forget, I will not forget you. See, I've engraved you on the palms of my hands. Your walls are ever before me. All of Isaiah 49 is an amazing thing. I just feel like the Lord is, his eyes are so on this nation. And as, a, as I was just praying over the Ukraine this morning, the Lord began to speak to me and show me a few things about this amazing nation. Obviously, it was a nation that was formed from the, the, the former Soviet Union. And the name that Ukraine actually means borderlands. Like if mm. you think about borderlands, you think about like uh, not, not cast off, but it's like it's an outer lying bit of land. And so it's interesting that the Lord is like, it's even built into, into the identity of this nation that they were, they were formed in that way. But yet the Lord is actually saying that from this, I'm going to use this to, to forge a nation. And this is what I wrote down, the Lord said. He said, watch out of this how a nation is forged and truly birthed. I feel like it's a rebirth season. Even though we're seeing, all we're seeing is the destruction, all we're, all we're seeing is the onslaught. You watch how a nation is going to be birthed and you watch how the church is going to come out of this. This Amen. is not a subsidiary of an old nation, um, but this is a shining light nation and watch it now emerge with its own voice. And then the Lord said to me, he said, that Ukraine is my harvest nation. And I don't mm. really know too much about what's been happening in Ukraine in terms of like, you know, harvest and evangelism. Maybe I should contact Ben Fitzgerald. But I remember when Nick Vujicic went to the Ukraine, I think I forgot what year it was, but I remember him telling us about like 500,000 people. I'm not sure how many people came to the Lord, but it was like a ridiculous, wow. like ridiculous soul, like souls came to Jesus in that time. And I just know that Ukraine has been it's been set aside by the Lord as a special, it's like a prototype of what's about to unroll, like roll yeah. out through the rest of Europe. And he's ordained that. It's a special nation. Like God's, 
heart for this nation. I've just been feeling all morning like, man, like I've been feeling the grief and like the just, you know, just being, you know, obviously where I'm human, tearing between what I'm seeing and everything like that and just praying and interceding and travail for this nation. Oh, At the Nick, same time, just tapping Nick, into the heart of God, like, man, God is about to do something. Sorry, bro. It looks like we're about to get kicked off because we hit okay. an hour. I'm going to start it back in like one minute.